He talks about the right way that will take you to the right destination. And he also talks about the wrong way that will take you to be lost. And the first way he talks about is um, the wrong way. And it's found in Romans 10, 1 through 4. So can we open up our Bibles to that and can I ask somebody to read Romans 10, 1 through 4 for me? Anybody? All right. Yeah. Dear brothers and sisters, the long with my heart and my prayer to God is that the Jewish people may be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal, for they do not understand God's way of making people right for himself. Instead, they are clinging to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. They won't go along with God's way, for Christ has accomplished the whole purpose of the law. All believe, who believe in him are made right with God. Thanks. All right, so we saw here that Paul is writing to the Jewish people. He says, the people of Israel. So he's talking to the Jews. We also see that he had, he said he longs for them to be saved. He had much passion for them uh, to, to have salvation. And he also, he doesn't say, oh, you guys are terrible people. We need to turn uh, away from what you're doing. But he says, they had a lot of passion and zeal for God. But the problem was, it was misdirected zeal. It wasn't, it wasn't the right passion. They weren't doing it the right way. We saw in verse 3 it says that they misunderstood how to be right with God. So basically Paul is saying the Jews wanted salvation. They desired God. They were on fire for God. But, but they were going uh, the wrong way. They, they were trying to do it um, by doing good works or by being good people, or obeying the law. That's how they were trying to uh, have salvation. And Paul's saying, that's wrong. You don't understand. And they didn't understand that it, it was impossible to be saved like that. They didn't understand what they had to do. And in verse 4, uh, Paul gives them a glimpse of what they have to do, and it says, for Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. So he's saying, when Christ came, it changed the way you guys receive salvation. It changed the way you. Um, it changed the way you have to um, be saved or to go to heaven. And right now, I want we're gonna do our quiet time now, in the middle, and we're gonna go into our small group rooms. And I want you guys to just take a few minutes, read Romans ten, five through eight, and then uh, after like the small group leaders, whenever you think they're done with that, and then go over the questions that they answer. So we saw in small group and in the quiet time that the Jews were still thinking that they could do something to be saved. And Paul's writing that how like Jesus came down to earth, he did it all himself. Jesus was raised from the dead, he did it all himself. There's nothing that we did for him to do that. And he's saying in verse 8 he says that this message is close at hand. And it all they have to do is to live by faith and not that they couldn't do anything. So the Jews were seeking the wrong way. We figured that out. But what is the right way? How are people saved? And I want you guys to just watch this video for a couple minutes. Well, person dies and goes to this world, nobody's going to heaven. I don't know, never really thought about it. How does a person get to heaven? I like to think it's because they're a decent human being. How does a person get to heaven? Not the way I'm getting there, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a tough one, I don't know. Hopefully, you do the right things. <laughs> How does a person get to heaven? Actually, you don't get there because you're already there. It's already eaten. Every day, you got day, you got night. So. You're in heaven and hell all the time. So how you gonna get where you already are? How does a person get to heaven? <laughs> how does a person get to heaven? I have no idea. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not religious. I'm sorry. Heaven's inside us already. So I don't think you get to heaven. I think that something that you just recognize inside yourself, inside of the people. Heaven? Not, not the good old way of the purgatory. These days it's like good deeds. How does a person get to heaven? I don't know that there really is one. Oh, I, know. Oh, no. I guess 
that's one of the features that I had when you worked hard. You know, the easy answer is be a good Christian because I'm Christian. You could be a good Jew. You could be a good person of Islamic faith. Doesn't matter. How does a person get to heaven? Oh, yeah. Garden Town Gate at the time that you arrive. You go right through the front door if they let you in, and if they don't let you in, you turn your way and you try another day. How does a person get to heaven? Uh, asking Jesus Christ in their heart. So we saw here that a lot of people didn't know. They were just giving random answers. They had no idea. And Paul gives us the answer to this question in verses 9 and 10. So open up your Bibles to Romans 10, and I'm going to read verses 9 and 10. It's up on the screen. Uh, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It's by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. So what are the two things that Paul says that you need to do to be saved? Confess with your mouth, and what else? Believe in your heart. All right. And we saw in the video that a ton of people had no idea. They were giving random answers. They thought, well, heaven's already inside of me. Or heaven's already on earth. We have night and day. It just, it didn't make sense. Some people said, I don't even believe in it. You know? And some other people were just like the Jews. They thought, oh, you know, it's, today it's like being good. Uh giving offering, going to church, just being a good person, you know? And that's what the Jews thought. They thought just living by the law made them go to heaven and made them get salvation. And the important part of this passage is like the order that Paul gives it in verse 10. He says, for it is by believing in your heart. And that's, that's the big part of this passage. It's not... It's not just saying it. Anyone can say that, oh yeah, I believe that there was a God. I just don't really trust in Him. Anybody can can like just fake say it. But Paul says here, the important part is believing in your heart. It is. That's what makes us real Christians. That's the difference between real Christians and people that just say it. It's, a, it's not just someone saying it, but it, it's a heart issue. And it's actually a change in your heart. And there's a great example of this found in Luke 23, 39 through 43. And it proves what Paul is saying. Because So can, John, we open up to Luke 23 and then read verses 39 to 43 for me. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Proving it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested. Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve, we deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Thanks. So we see here that three guys are hanging on a cross. Jesus is in the middle and there's two criminals on each side. And the first one's kind of like mocking Jesus. He's like, whoa, if you're the king of the Jews, why don't you save yourself? He's like, whoa, why don't you, why don't you save us while you're at it? He's just, he's mocking God. And the other one's like, are you crazy? Like, what are you thinking? You, he says, don't you realize that he's perfect? Don't, he's saying, don't you realize that he is the son of God, that he is the Messiah? So he believed in his heart that God or that Jesus was the Son of God. And then he confessed with mouth. He was yelling at the other guy. He was saying, Don't you don't you understand this? That we we don't deserve this. Like we deserve to be hung on the cross. But Jesus doesn't. And then he asked Jesus a question. He says, Will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And what does Jesus say? He doesn't say, No, 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 hold on, wait a second. You haven't obeyed enough rules. You haven't obeyed the law good enough. He doesn't say that. Instead, what does he say to him? Who can tell him? So, he saves him. He says, I assure you, when you die, you will be with me in paradise. 
And this, like I said, this proves what Paul is saying. He's, he just didn't say you have to work for the salvation. He doesn't say that you, you had to do a bunch of things on earth and you blew it. He says, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and then you will be with me in paradise. And then Paul ends this section in verses 11 through 13. And can I have somebody read those? Romans 10, 11 through 13. Uh, Romans 10, 11 through 13. Now the scripture says, Everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, since the same Lord of all is rich to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All right, so Paul ends this section saying that everyone can receive the salvation. Bob talked about, like last week in Romans 9, that the Jews thought that they were the only ones that could be saved because they had the law and that they were God's chosen people. But Paul's saying here, you don't understand this either. He's saying anyone who trusts in him will be saved. He says the Jew and Gentile, it's the same. It doesn't matter. When Jesus came, it changed it. And then at the end, he says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. And that's, that's good for us because it shows us that we can receive salvation by calling on the name of the Lord and by believing in our hearts and confessing with our mouths. And I know, I know all of us are in different parts of our walk with God. I know all of us are in different parts um, in our relationship with God. Some of us might have done what Paul said. Some of us, uh, I know some of us have accepted God in our heart, believed in our hearts, and confessed with our mouth. I know some of us have done that. And, but I know also some of us might be thinking, well, I'm, kinda, I'm a good person. I go to church. Isn't that enough? And that's what the Jews thought. They thought that, well, since, since I'm obeying the law, since I have... I, wanna, I want to receive salvation by doing this, that, that I'm saved. And some of us think the same thing. But going to church doesn't make us a Christian. It's just, it's, it's believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. And others of us, this might be the first time that you've ever heard this. This might be the first time that you're like, oh wow, so that's how you do it. You might have been taught, <clears throat> like what the Jews thought, that you... You could like earn your way to heaven. So if this is the first time you've heard it, uh, we would love to talk to you about it. If you have any questions, just go to a leader. We'd love to talk to you about it, explain it more. But no matter what part you're in, it's important that we all know that we receive salvation one and only way. And one and only way will take you to the right destination, which is heaven. And like I, it's what Paul says, believing in your heart, having a changed heart, and then going out and confessing with your mouth. This is what we're called to do. This is what Christianity is all about. Um, and if we've done that, we're called to go out and spread it. We saw in the video, tons of people had no idea how, like, the only way to heaven. They, they were confused. And Paul, Paul saw that the Jews were confused in this passage. And he, he longed for them to be saved. And that's how we should be. We should long for the people that we see confused to be saved. And we should explain to them this passage that you have to believe in your heart, accept Jesus Christ in your heart, and confess with your mouth. And I really, I like this verse because it, it tells us how to become children of God. It tells us how to become right with God. And in, this, in small groups, uh, you might have went over a question that I really liked. It says, how would your relationship with God be different if we had to earn our salvation? And that really hits me because it's like, I'm, I'm a huge sinner. I'm so glad that I don't have to earn my salvation. I'm so glad that Jesus is, is the one and only way for me to be saved. So... I just want you guys to think about, uh, in your daily lives, just think about this question. How different would your relationship with God be if you had to earn God's salvation or if you had to earn God's favor by doing good things? Let's pray.